He is one of Israel's most wanted. Yahya Sinwar, head of the Hamas militant group in Gaza, whose threats against Israel two years ago came true. Believed to be the mastermind behind the October 7th attacks, the man is no stranger to the Israeli authorities. Born in 1962 in Khan Yunis in southern Gaza, Sinwar joined the Hamas group in the 80s and climbed the ranks while being arrested multiple times. He was convicted in 1989 for murdering Israelis and Palestinians who had collaborated with Tel Aviv. While incarcerated, he was interrogated for hours on end by this intelligence officer. He was very crowd. He was very crowd on this name. He himself told me, my name is the butcher from Khan Yunis. While in prison, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor and treated by Israeli doctors. The doctor explained to him that he had been cured of cancer. I said to him, you see, Israel, the battle of your life actually saved you. And he said, okay, but that's your duty. I'm not going to be grateful. After over 20 years behind bars, Yahya Sinwar was released from prison in 2011, along with 1,000 other Palestinian prisoners, as part of an exchange for Israeli hostage Gilad Shalit. Labeled by the U.S. as a specially designated global terrorist in 2015, he became the leader of Hamas in the Strip two years later. The top five reasons that turned Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar into the most brutal terrorist in the world. Sinwar was arrested in 1988 and sentenced to four life sentences for multiple murders. Sinwar is known as the butcher of Khan Yunis for the brutal use of violence and torture against his opponents. In 2011, Sinwar was released along with 1,000 other terrorists in return for the release of an IDF soldier abducted by Hamas. In 2015, Simwar was added to the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. Simwar surrounds himself with Palestinian children and uses them as human shields. Simwar is the architect of the October 7th massacre, in which over 1,200 Jews were murdered, raped and kidnapped. This was the largest massacre of Jews in a single day since the Holocaust. To secure a better future for Gaza's children, we must free Gaza from Simwar's grip. Free Gaza from Hamas. A key moment leading up to the present Gaza crisis came in 2011, when in exchange for a single Israeli soldier kidnapped by Hamas, the Israelis released over 1,000 prisoners from their jails, none more famous than Yahya Sinwar. He had been incarcerated for 22 years after being sentenced to four consecutive life terms for murder. He was given a hero's welcome in Gaza and was quickly reintegrated into the Hamas leadership. In 2017, he was appointed to replace the outgoing Hamas leader in Gaza, Ismail Haniya, and he was reappointed to that post in 2021. He never made a secret of his elaborate plans to have thousands of Hamas fighters attack Israel, which he called the Jewish entity. Back in the 1980s, Sinwar was an acolyte of Hamas founder Sheikh Yassin, the quadriplegic religious leader. He has said that Yassin charged him with rooting out traitors and collaborators in the Hamas movement. At his 1989 trial in Israel, Sinwar confessed to murdering a suspected collaborator named Ramsey in the graveyard of his Gaza hometown of Khan Yunus. He said, We didn't tell Ramsey what we were going to do. While we interrogated him, we didn't beat him much. I blindfolded him with a rag so he couldn't see. I put him inside a large grave and strangled him with the kafia I had. After strangling him, I wrapped him in a white shroud and closed the grave. I was sure that Ramsey knew he deserved to die. During his prison years, Sinwar used the time to learn Hebrew. He said it was to better understand his enemy. Shortly before he was released, he gave an interview in Hebrew to Israeli TV, during which he claimed that he was now prepared to turn the page and work towards a 50-year ceasefire in the region. אני חושב שהעמדה שלנו שאנחנו נתמוך בכל דבר שירגיע את האזור. He knows Israel. He is watching Israeli television. He reads the Israeli press. He knows the nuances between politicians and parties. And, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, all sorts of influences and social media, uh, etc. He considers himself an expert on Israel. Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar's speech in Gaza last year was no idle threat. We will come to you with an endless number of rockets. We will come to you in a flood of soldiers without limit. It sounded like crowd-pleasing hyperbole. But at this time, a secret plan had already been hatched for an assault on Israel, a country that jailed Sinwar for 23 years before he was freed and rose to the Hamas leadership. October 7 would be the deadliest day in Israel's history, in which the militants killed 1,200 people and took 240 hostages, Israeli tallies say. Israel has retaliated with bombardment and a ground invasion, killing at least 15,000 Palestinians. Sinwar spent half his adult life behind bars in Israel. He was jailed in 1988 for planning the abduction and killing of two Israeli soldiers and the murder of four Palestinian collaborators. This was the moment he was freed in 2011, one of more than a thousand Palestinians released for a single Israeli soldier. This is one of the biggest strategic events in the history of our people's cause in the past years. So we are living a moment of unusual joy. Sinwar has been leading negotiations for prisoner swaps with hostages, sources say, and it's a personal issue. He has vowed to free all Palestinian prisoners Israel holds. Sinwar is a ruthless man, according to Michael Kuby a former official for Israel's Shin Bet intelligence agency, who interrogated him for 180 hours in jail. The now 61-year-old militant leader was then in his late 20s, Kubi says, but dedicated to attacking Israel. Yehia Sinwar was at the prison. He was the chief of the all uh, Hamas prisoners. They were sitting together. They make discussion inside the prison, of course, and they thought how to give to to fight the Israelis, you know, after they will be released. That was his plan. Born in the Khan Yunis refugee camp, Sinwar rose to prominence as a hardline enforcer. Before jail, he was head of the Al-Majd security apparatus which tracked, killed and punished Palestinians, accused of collaborating with Israel. Sources who know him, whether Hamas or Israeli, agree his devotion to the militant movement is extraordinary. So he told me the Hamas is my wife, the Hamas is my child, the Hamas for me is everything. It's rare to see these fighters out in public. But on the day of the prisoner swap, thousands of men from the Al Qassam brigades celebrated the deal with a strong display of strength across Gaza. The military wing has changed a great deal since it was formed. It's well organized, with more than 40,000 fighters, heavy weapons and four-wheel drives. Yahya Sinwar knows better than most how much the group has changed. He was one of its founding members and was also among the prisoners released in the Hamas-Israel prisoner swap. In front of this huge crowd, I remember the first guns we started our work with. And then I realized that God has blessed our struggle and efforts. I felt very proud and dignified. There is no doubt that the Qassam brigades have enough equipments and experience which surprised me honestly. I imagined that the brigades were better than before, but not as good as this. <laughs> In fact, Yahya Sinwa is the only one of the group's top leaders to be freed in the deal. His brother is also a member of the Al Qassam brigades and was in charge of keeping Gilad Shalit hidden in Gaza. For now, the military wing of Hamas is maintaining a ceasefire with Israel, but Yahya Sinwa says the Al Qassams will have to fight again and he will join them. <laughs> I'm still a soldier, and I will continue with my nephews on the battlefield. I have been absent for 25 years, so there are many things I need to learn. So I still need to evaluate all the facts and decide where I should be exactly. The prisoner swap has elevated the standing of the Al Qassam fighters in Gaza, and with it, leaders like Yahya Sinwar. They are being honored in parades organized by Hamas. 
This rally is another sign of strength and support for Hamas and its military wing, the Al Qassam Brigade. It's also to remind people that it was the military wing that not only captured Gilad Shalit, but also negotiated the final deal. Yahya Sinwar has returned to the arms of Hamas and its fighters. It's a military force very different to the one he left, and now it alone rules the streets of Gaza. Nicole Johnston, Al Jazeera, Gaza. Yahya Sinwar signed his death warrant. As he has done many times in the past, in October, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu swore vengeance against Hamas leaders, whom he referred to as dead men. He recently called Sinwar a little Hitler. In his deal with the Israeli government, Sinwar settled for a three to one ratio in his trade of civilian hostages. He is expected to be much tougher in negotiations for Israeli military captives, if not at the over 1,000 to 1 ratio that brought about his own release 12 years ago. If you want a real ceasefire, here is the right address. This is the phone number of Hamas's office in Gaza. You can all call plus 970-599-3765 and ask for Ikhya Sinwar. Tell Hamas to put down their arms, turn themselves in, and return our hostages. This will bring a complete ceasefire that will last forever. He always makes a point of being surrounded by children to deter the Israelis from going after him, because he's a target, obviously. He knows, and he, I think he accepts it, that he has to run for his life for the rest of his days. I think he understands, at the end, the Israelis will get him. It doesn't matter where he is. He could be in the bunker for a year, for two, for three. At one point, the Israelis will get him.
לא ראו מזמן אוריון ואיסמעיל אותי משפיל נשבר לי מהאיבליל שממית חי 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 וואלה איך אני עוד חי תקוע פה בלעזה בבונקר ולא זזה אני כבר מיובש אני עוד חי 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 הציונים בדרך אליי בקרוב אני בקבר בדיוק